Today we look at a very interesting limit. Pause the video, think about it, and let me know your answer. The answer is one. Okay, where does this one come from? This is counterintuitive because the nested radical, no matter how deep it is, as long as it's finite, the result is going to be zero. Therefore, this one must come from the fact that this radical is infinitely nested. If we denote the depths of nesting as n, it becomes clear that we have a double limit. For any finite n, if we send x to zero first, the inner limit becomes zero. And then we send n to infinity, which doesn't change the zero at all. But I think the proper way to interpret this question is to send n to infinity first, then send x to zero. Look at the original question. The n goes to infinity limit is implicit. Let's set this limit to be p and play the old trick. So p equals square root of x plus p. Square both sides, p square equals x plus p. Then p square minus p minus x is zero. This quadratic equation has two roots. Which one should we pick? Notice that p is a square root. Treating p as a function of x, no matter how small x is, p can never be negative. Therefore, we have to take the positive root. Putting these two results together, it is clear that something must be very interesting geometrically. Let's plot this function around x equals zero, and you can find the interactive version in the description. Without too much surprise, we do have a cliff when x is zero. This agrees with our first approach. As n becomes larger and larger, we slow down in front of the cliff. But when n becomes infinite, we slow down to infinitely small speed. Solving this question is like watching two best fighters fight. They both have infinite strength, and whoever moves first wins.